everyone, I'm Ashley at the Silver Bay Public Library and I am once again here to bring you guys story time. Today I've decided on a special topic and we're going to be reading stories that discuss bullying. Bullying is not a good thing and it can make people feel very, very bad. But it's something we need to talk about, so I've pulled some fun stories, well, as fun as they can be, just to learn some people's reactions and to talk about it a little bit. So, let us dive right in. My first story of the day is going to be called My Footprints, written by Bao Fai and illustrated by Baja Tran. I apologize if I pronounce names wrong. Um, I'm bad with names. But how about we jump right in? D sees those kids laughing at her again. She stomps away from school. The crisp white blanket of new snow cracks like eggshells beneath her feet. She looks behind her and sees her jagged footprints. Footprints, she says. My footprints. The way stops, she looks up at the branches that reach like gloved fingers into the sky and see a red cardinal. Where are your friends? The way asks. Don't you fly south with the rest of the birds? The cardinal doesn't answer. Maybe he doesn't feel like talking right now, the way, the way thinks. The little bird could fly away into the giant pane of sky if it felt in danger. The way pointed her feet in a V-shape and hopped once, slightly leaving shallow prints. She stopped and draws a line through the middle of each V to make a third claw. Chirp, chirp, chirp. The way squeaks and flaps her arms. Almost home, the houses grow closer together. She can't read the bubbly words of graffiti on the train cards, but she thinks they are beautiful. She remembers how she saw a deer here once, how out of place it looked, but she knew its family must have been close. My footprints, the way whispers. She tiptoes in small loops, dipping the tip of her boot, boot deep in the snow like dainty hooves, wanting to feel peaceful, quiet, left alone. Mama... Gok and Mama Arti smile at the way when she gets home. The way knows they are both tired from work, but their smiles feel like a heater that warms the way's snow wet toes. How is school, sweetie? Mama no Gok, Gok asks. The way doesn't want to answer that question. and says she says, Do snakes have butts? What? Mama Arti laughs. The way laughs at first too, then frowns. She feels like a sudden snowstorm. Are you okay? Mama Ngok asks. I don't want to talk about it, the way shouts. As she shuffles away, leaving tracks like a snake slithering through the snow, she hears her mama's talking. Mama Artie's voice sounds like, sounds frayed but warm, like the way's favorite blanket. The way runs a stick along a fence that's missing two teeth like she is. She makes more footprints, this time running faster, so they are further apart. Quick, quick, quick. My footprints, the way pants. She is... A spotted leopard that can blend into its surroundings and disappear if threatened. Meow! The way screeches, though that doesn't seem quite right. My footprints, the way says, stomping deep into the snow. She looks behind her and sees a grizzly bear's paw prints, strong and brave. A bear stands up for itself. Other animals are afraid to make fun of it. Roar! The way growls, baring her teeth. Mama Arthi and Mama... Gok come out into the tiny snowy backyard polka dotted or into the tiny snowy backyard polka dotted by Thwaite's footprints. What is the strongest animal, Thwe asks. Mama Archie thinks and says, There are a lot of different ways to be strong. An eagle is strong at flying in the sky. A dolphin is strong at swimming in the sea. What do you think, Mama Ngok asks Thwe. Maybe a dragon Thwe says. She imagines one with googly eyes and a long body and whiskers fluttering like a flag among the clouds, but she can't imagine its footprints. How about an elephant? Mama Artie suggests. They both put, the way puts both her feet together like an elephant hoof and stomps one big hole in the deep snow. She wishes she could make four all at once. I want to be the biggest and strongest and scariest monster, the way says, so that if the kids at school make fun of me for having two moms or tell me to go back to where I come from or call me names, or bother me because I'm a girl, I can make them stop. Can we play with you? asks Mama Ngok. Yes, Dwey says. Let's make footprints. 
I'm gonna go up and says, I wonder what creature we can pretend to be together because we're stronger together. What's your favorite? Doi asks her. The phoenix, Mom and the Gok says. Doi sees their shadows curl into long blue feathers. Rise from the ashes, she shouts, remembering a story about the powerful creature. The three of them holding hands with Doi in the middle, then spread their arms wide so that together their shadows form a great wingspan. And what's your favorite, Mama? Doi asked Mama Arthi. Do you remember the painting I showed you once of the Sarabaha? Mama Arthi asks. Part lion, part bird, Doi says. The three of them get in line, hands on hips, and they become the fearless, many-legged creature. An unexpected combination of beautiful things, Doi yells as their Saraba marches through the snow. What's your favorite, Mama Arti asked Doi. I want to make one up, Doi says. It can fly and swim and run, and it's always kind to everyone else, and only eats birthday cake. What does it look like, Mama Ndugok asks. It has... Black hair and black eyes, it's both a boy and a girl, and its skin keeps changing color from black to light brown to lighter and back to black. Mm -hmm. Not to hide, but because it wants to be different shades of pretty, and it never hurts to make fun of any and it never hurts or makes fun of anyone. Mm -hmm. That sounds like my new favorite creature, Mama Arthi says, her laughter a warm bubble. What's its name? Its name is Snake Butt, the way says, then changes her mind. No, it's Arti Thwe Ngok Osaurus. As the three of them hold hands, they make footprints together. The footprints of the rare and beautiful and strong and brave and quick and quiet Arti Thwe Ngok Osaurus in the fine cold snow. Thwe starts to chant, Our footprints, our footprints. And that is the story. My footprints. I thought that was very cute. And remember, be kind to people. I also apologize um, for my bad pronunciation of the characters' names. I don't mean to be insensitive, I'm just very bad at pronouncing names. So, But we are going to go on to our next book, which is going to be Nobody Hugs a Cactus by Carter Goodrich. The cactus looks a little mad, so let's see why. Hank lived in a pot. The pod sat in a window. The window looked out at the empty desert. It was hot, dry, peaceful, and quiet. Just the way Hank liked it. But every now and then, somebody would interrupt Hank's peace and quiet. Hi, Hank, Rosie the Tumbleweed called out. Isn't it a beautiful day? Hank ignored her. He just wanted to be left alone. Okay, so long, said Rosie cheerfully, and she tumbled away. Hank was happy again. But just as he was beginning to relax, Hello, shouted a tortoise. Private property, yelled Hank. Keep out. The tortoise was so frightened, he hid in a shell. Hank was still yelling at the tortoise when a jackrabbit dashed by. Hiya, Prickles, she shouted. My name isn't Prickles, Hank yelled back, and stay out of my yard. Tumbleweed, tortoise, jackrabbits. What next, said Hank. A coyote came lopping by. No dogs allowed, Hank yelled. I'm not a dog, said the coyote, and you are as prickly on the inside as you are on the outside. Before Hank could yell back at the coyote, a cowboy strode past. Keep off the grass, shouted Hank. Keep off the grass, shouted Hank. What grass, said the cowboy. Seems to me somebody needs a hug. Too bad nobody hugs a cactus. Hi, said a lizard. Who invited you, said Hank, and just in case you're wondering, I don't want a hug. That's good, said the lizard, because I don't want to give you one. Then he skittered away. Now we'll land it on the roof. If you're looking for a hug, said Hank, well, I guess I could give you one. Who, me? said the owl. You must be joking. And for the first time, Hank began to feel a little lonely. The next morning, Hank was feeling more sad on the inside than prickly. Maybe a hug wouldn't be so bad after all. The wind began to pick up, an old cup blew by and stunk, stuck to Hank's face. His arms were too short to get it off. Great, said Hank. After a while, Rosie came bouncing by. I'll get it off you, Hank, she shouted, and she jumped up to knock the cup off Hank's face. Then she tumbled away. Hank didn't have time to thank Rosie. He felt bad about all the other times he had been so rude to her. So he came up with a plan. 
Hank decided to grow the best flowers he could, and then give it to Rosie as a thank you gift. It took days, but at last it was ready. He couldn't wait for Rosie to pass by again. When at last she finally did come bouncing back, Hank held out the flower. Look, Rosie, he said, I grew it just for you. Rosie was so surprised she jumped up and gave Hank a great big hug. It felt so nice, Hank didn't want to let go. And as things turned out, he couldn't. Rosie and Hank had become stuck together. But they didn't care. After all, it's better to be stuck in a hug than stuck all alone. And that's the story of nobody hugs a cactus. The cactus was really mean to everyone around him, so no one wanted to be nice to him or give him a hug. But he realized that's not a good way to be, and you should be nice to everyone. Our next book is going to be The Smallest Girl in the Smallest Grade, written by Justin Roberts and illustrated by Christian Robinson. Let us dive in. Hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. There she is. I noticed her, but let's continue. She was the smallest girl in the smallest grade. She can barely see over her desk. Sure, her name could be heard in the daily roll call and she marched with her books down the same school hall, but hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, that Sally was paying super extra special attention. To the abandoned kite with the tangled string, to the 27 keys on the janitor's ring, to the leaves as they turn green to gold in the fall, to the time Tommy Torino was tripped in the hall. That's not nice. She watched as the wildflowers tipped toward the light and heard the howl of a hound dog late one night. She was there when the stray cats, who normally fought, conducted a meeting in the church parking lot. She saw a Kevin McQuain get pushed off a slide, and the oncoming tears that he wanted to hide. Well, that's not nice at all. And she'll never forget that parent-teacher day when Billy's much larger father suddenly dragged him away. B Billy was the one who pushed Kevin down the slide, it seems. But through all the mean words and the cold stares, no one even noticed that Sally was there. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, that Sally was paying super extra special attention. Oh, that kid got pushed off too. She'd seen how a whisper could make someone cower like a bulldozer crushing through fields of wildflowers. And it kept piling up this discarded debris, those beautiful kites tangled in trees. So on February 3rd at 11.29, Sally stepped straight out of the lunchroom line. She said, I'm tired of seeing this terrible stuff. Stop hurting each other. This is enough. Now, if you laughed out loud or didn't care that there was some girl with her hand in the air. But then something super extra special happened that day, as Howard O'Henry suddenly set down his tray. Like waves rolling in one after another, first Molly rose up, then Michael's twin brother. It was Tyrone and Therese, then Amanda and Paul, who pushed out their chairs and stretched their arms tall. From the friendly lunch lady with the dishes she carted, to that new third grade teacher who had only recently started. Yes, everyone there, even Principal Claire, had joined little Sally with their fingers in the air. And though hound dogs were destined to howl at night, and most stray cat meetings would end up as fights, and kites would continue to get struck in trees they all felt for a moment like the janitor's keys, fastened together with a heavy steel ring that held all the secrets to unlock everything. As the world returned to the way that it was, Sally noticed the difference as she usually does, when Billy paused briefly to open the door for Miss O'Connell and 17 more, or when Molly scooched over to make some space on the coral riser for Ellen and Grace. These moments that often get taken for granted, a wildflower appearing that no one had planted. The swings soon resumed their rhythm and sway, and day turned to night and night turned to day. People remembered and would quite often mention that Sally had been paying super extra special attention. And how the world could transform and a change could be made by the smallest girl in the smallest grade. And that is the story of the smallest girl in the smallest grade. Even though she was small, she was still able to stay. 
able to stand up for those around her and make a change. So remember that. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. You can always make things better, if you will. Our next book is Zack Stands Up by William Mulcahy and illustrated by Darren McKee. So let us begin. Zack was eating lunch with Jaden, a popular kid from his soccer team. Roxy was there too. Zack wanted Sonia to join them, but Roxy shook her head. You can't sit with us, Roxy said. Sonia smiled. Sonia's smile turned down. Why not? Jaden said. It's reserved for people who don't smell. I don't smell, Sonia said, and I can sit wherever I want. Roxy waved a hand in front of her face. Not here, you can't. P.U. Zach didn't know what to do as he watched Sonia walk away. For the rest of lunch, he sat in silence while Sonia ate alone. Zack was still upset in class that afternoon. He couldn't stop thinking about what Jaden and Roxy did to Sonia. He knew he could have stuck up for his friend, but he was too scared. Everyone was watching. Zack got so distracted that he couldn't keep his mind on schoolwork. When Miss Rosamond asked him to point to the dorsal fin on the board, he didn't know what she was talking about. He was totally lost. After school, Zack sat on the bus waiting to go home. When Sonia came down the aisle, Roxy stuck her foot out, and Sonia tripped. Everyone laughed. Everyone except Zack. He scooted over to make room for Sonia on the seat, but she walked past him to the back. At home, Zack was so upset he threw his backpack down the hall. Hey, his brother said. The sight of Alex playing sheriff made Zack smile in spite of his bad mood. Sorry, Alex, Zack said. I had a bad day. He told Alex what happened to Sonia. The worst thing is, I, don't, I didn't do anything to help her. I don't know what to do. You should have dumped milk on their heads, Alex said. Zack laughed, but he knew that wouldn't solve anything. I just get in trouble, he said. It stinks to get picked on, Alex said. These two kids used to steal my crackers at my crackers at snack time, and they told me everyone and told everyone I was a crybaby. It made me so mad. What made them stop? Zack asked. Alex thought for a minute. It got better after Caleb came over and talked to me. I was kinda crying, and Caleb asked if I was okay. Zack said, when we talk about bullying in class, Miss Rosamond says it's important to speak up when you see bullying happen. happen. Just speaking up can make it stop a lot of the time. It was good he was on my side, Alex said. What happened next? Zack asked. We took off. Caleb and I went outside. I was glad to get out of there. I would take off too, Zack said. Who wants to hang around where kids are being mean? I know, said Alex said. I was still pretty mad. Caleb asked me what happened, and I told him how they had been picking on me. I felt a lot better after I told him about it. Caleb sounds like a good friend, Zach said. He's a good listener, just like Mom. My teacher, Miss Rosman, calls it active listening. When someone asks questions and lets you know they understand. Alex said, Caleb said we should tell our teacher what happened. I didn't want to tattle, but we told him anyway. Mr. Gomez said it was, a good, said it was good that we did. Zack remembered Miss Rosamond saying the same thing about reporting bullying. It's not tattling. It's keeping someone safe. The best part of all is that Caleb and I are friends now, Alex said. Zack agreed. That was pretty cool. Zack looked at the toy badge on Alex's costume. I have an idea, he said. The boys ran into the kitchen where Zack grabbed a sheet of paper and a marker. He drew a star just like Alex's badge. The star has five points, Zack said. The top point is the title. Stand up to bullying. The other four points can show the four things that Caleb did to stand up for you. Zach wrote each of the things Caleb did next to a point on the star. Those things matched ideas that Zach had learned from Miss from Miss Rosamond. Stand up to bullying. S. Speak up. Talk to the person about being bullied. Talk to the person being bullied. T. Take off. Get the person away from the bullying. A. Actively listen. Let the person talk about what happened. R. Report. Tell an adult what happened. The first letters of the step spell star, Alex said. The next morning, Zach put his stand up to bullying drawing in his backpack. He hoped that Jaden and Roxy would forget about being mean to Sonia today. Then he wouldn't have to do anything. But if they hurt her again, he'd be ready. He would think about star. 
It happened after morning recess. After Sonia hung up her coat, Roxy pulled it off the hook and let it fall to the floor. She and Jason laughed as Sonia picked it up and hung it up again. Again, Roxy dropped it. That smelly thing belongs on the floor, Roxy said. Zach's heart began to thump hard. The other kids were watching. Roxy and Jaden were popular. Zach worried that everyone would take their side. But he knew he had to do something. Let me get that, Zach said to Sonia. He picked up her coat and hung it on the hook. We better get to class. What do you care about her stupid coat, Jaden asked. It's my friend's coat, Zach said. I'm just helping her. That coat has stink germs, Jaden said. That's why nobody likes Sonia Stinkola. That's really that's not true, Zach said. Sonia has been my best friend ever since preschool, and she doesn't stink. Another girl spoke up then. I like Sonia too, Charlene said. We go fishing down at the creek in the summer. Who cares, Roxy mumbled, but she didn't say anything else. Come on, let's take off, Zach said to Sonia. They stopped in the hallway on the way to class. Are you alright, Zach asked. Sonia took a deep breath. I'm better now. She said, I've tried to ignore those guys, but they keep on being mean to me. I told them to stop, but they didn't work but that didn't work either. I'm glad to know I have friends who care. After school, Zach and Sonia told Miss Rosamond about what happened. Zach showed Sonia and Miss Rosamond his stand up to bullying star. That's very cool, said Miss Rosamond. It can be really scary to stand up to bullying. It's important to remember that you can do something. It feels good to help someone, Zach said. But Miss Rosamond? What is it? What happens now, Zach wondered, if Jaden and Roxy would be mean to Sonya again or to him. He also wondered if Roxy and Jaden would be in trouble. Would any of them be friends again? I will talk with them, Miss Rosman said. The next day, Miss Rosman had Roxy and Jaden stay in from lunch. She talked with them about their bullying. Roxy, do you remember how you felt when those girls spread mean rumors about you earlier in the year? I felt terrible, Roxy said sadly. I remember that, Jaden said. You were really upset. How do you think Sonia felt when you left her out and picked on her? Miss Rosman asked. Also terrible, Roxy admitted. I never thought about that. We just thought it was funny, Jaden said. We didn't think about our feelings at all. Is there anything you can Is there anything I can do to fix it? Ros Roxy asked. You can let Sonia know that you know you hurt her and you won't do it again, Miss Rosman suggested. Later at recess, Roxy went up to Sonia looking friendly. Sonia was nervous. What if it was a trick and Roxy was going to say something mean? But Roxy said, Sonia, I'm really sorry I was mean to you. I know I must have really hurt. I promise I won't act that way anymore. Will you play soccer with us? Sonia thought about it. Roxy seemed like she really meant it. Okay, she said. Let's play. When people don't say anything about bullying, they allow it to keep happening. When you need help standing up to bullying, you can use the Stand Up to Bullying Star. S. Speak up by talking to people being bullied. And T. Take off by helping them leave the area. Ask questions about how they are feeling and actively listen, A, to the answers. R. Report what happened to an adult as soon as you can. It's important to support people who are bullied by continuing to talk with them and including them in the future. It takes a lot of courage to stand up to bullying. Remember, your decision to do something makes all the difference. And that was Zach Stands Up. Remember, it's never okay to bully people for any reason. You should always be kind and thoughtful um, to everyone around you. So, if you see bullying or you know someone getting bullied, think of the star steps and follow them. And if you don't know what to do, always go talk to an adult that you trust. But that is going to be our last book for today. I know story time may have been a bit more somber or sad than usual, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening. And we have some wonderful stories for next time, so I hope you join me again on Friday. Thank you so much, and bye bye